Earlier today, the Aggies gathered for a pregame meal. They call it brunch, lunch, and uh, you know, obviously, David, you played college football in the NFL. You know the brotherhood that develops over a long season. And that's it between offensive line coach and senior offensive tackle there. Coach Mark Weber right there, one of the good offensive line coaches out there. And Kevin Wimpy is senior left tackle. Back to the Wildcat with Hunt. And William Asai with the tackle. Cedric Losi, Losi in on the play as well. And there's a look. Chucky Keaton. Third and goal. Spectacular career here for the Aggies. Left knee injury earlier this year, the same knee that he tore his ACL and MCL last year. Now it's Kent Myers running the offense. Freshman out of Texas. Looking to throw, the fade. Cleveland Wallace, the third. Too much contact with Ronald Butler. You see him, he's in good position, but that contact there and the holding, restricting of the arm, is what the official's gonna call every time. Pass interference. Defense, number six. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down. First and goal from the two now. Hunt to the left of Myers. They give it to Hunt up the middle. He runs into Vince Buhajer. Vince's dad, Michael, an executive chef at one of the best steakhouses in San Francisco. Harris is on Van Ness. Andrew Hauser, he's been a four-year starter. He was injured last year. Good football player. Now Myers rolling out. There's another touchdown. It's the senior Here's tight end, Jefferson Court. Third touchdown catch of the season for Court. Seven. It was tight at the half. The second half has been all Aggies. Myers with the short touchdown pass to court. Utah State in control. Welcome back and look at the way back machine. David Diaz Infante. Getting ready to play Long Beach and prime it for the pros. That's a great shot. But John Amanetti, my former line mate as well. Boy, that's look how old those jerseys and neck rolls look. I mean, did you see the date of that magazine? Did you, did you try to cover that up? 1986. 86, yeah. <laughs> hey, 20th ranked team in the country. Number one offense in the country. Led the, led the country in penalties and sacks. We got after people. Urban out to the 27. As you mentioned, 20th ranked team in the country that year. But what do you what do you think you learned the most at San Jose State that helped you in the NFL? Well, I think through the course of my four years of playing there, one, we were pretty wide open back then, playing a little bit more of a spread offense back then. So I think pass blocking is one of the things I, I always uh, uh, did on, very well. I had some great coaches, Claude Gilbert, Jack Elway, uh, guys who really helped prepare us for the NFL. But uh, you know, it was just a great experience there, uh, great time. Bringing the program up, we were 2-8-1 my junior year, and then go 10-2 my senior year. It was a great way to turn things around and leave the program on, uh, uh, on a good foundation. 
So tie that into what we're seeing here tonight. Already the winningest senior class in Utah State history. This group about to pick up win number 36. How do you describe that feeling of pride when you graduate knowing you left the program in better shape than when you arrived? Well, kind of like Zach Vigil and Sutera and Sweet and those guys, they were right here. And I think a couple of those guys were walk-ons. They came in here as freshmen, and that's we were one of the few freshmen that went to San Jose State at that time. To be a part of that building process and, and to see it go from where it was to now, look where Utah State is. Look what they've done the last few years. I mean, it's really incredible. They've produced players in the NFL. Uh, they're winning championships, and they're doing a heck of a job recruiting players in the state of Utah and outside of Utah to come to Logan. Zach Vigil with the sack. What a night, what a year, what a career for Zach Vigil here at Utah State. I tell you what, as you said, I got a chill down my spine right there, thinking about what it means for him, what he's done to this program, the way he plays the game. I love the guy. I've never met him. I've watched him play, and I got a lot of respect for him. There's Devin Centers with the tackle on Jabari Carr. See some frustration from number one. Second half has not gone the way San Jose State had it, hoped. It is tough when you lose a lot. This will be five games in a row for San Jose State. They're a young team that plays like a young team. And they've got to fight their way out of this thing. And in the first half, you saw some signs of improvement. But it's been all Utah State in the second half. Ryan Hayes, the junior. And another tackle for a loss. So that sends out Michael Carrizosa one more time. A loss of four. Look at that. What do you talk about having a memorable senior night? Wow. I did their Air Force game early in the season. He played one of the best games I've seen a linebacker play. Maybe ever. <laughs> I mean, he was all over the field. Um, and, and to think that. So again, Zach Vigil with 19 tackles. This is how the night started, hugging his mom on senior night. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Jimmy John's Great Sandwich Delivery and in part by Zales. Give her dazzling gifts from Zales, the diamond store. Let love shine. Utah State Creamery began producing ice cream in 1888, made entirely with milk from Utah State-owned cows. And it's processed at the school's creamery and sold at Utah State's Aggie Ice Cream Store. Mm. I thought I saw you sneaking over there earlier today after your workout. <laughs> There's Kennedy Williams with a run. Sophomore out of Las Vegas. Pick up the three. Five on the play clock. There's Hill. How about the Joel Hill? Let's send it down to Allison Williams. Well, guys, you may have noticed a change up there on the offensive line for Utah State. Senior left tackle Kevin Wimpy is no longer in the game. He's actually on the sideline in street clothes. Now, he is okay, but his knee stiffened up, so at the half, they pulled him out for the rest of the game. All right, thanks for that update. Yes, that is a senior. <laughs> that, that, is, that is a big man. That is a man. It looks like he's about 30, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I could barely grow a mustache back then. <laughs> He's been a good player for him. Now Myers rolling out, gets it to Hunter Sharp for a first down. Another tackle for Akeem King. Pick up of eight. There it is again. Another creative sign here by the fans at Utah State. The wimpy kid that Diary grew up, wimpy huh? kid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone's calling him the wimpy kid. No, no, no. That's a... That's a man That's right a there. Man. That's right. a full-grown man. 
They will certainly need him healthy next week against Boise State. Yeah, that's probably a smart reason why they did that, you know, to make sure he's at his best. Hill to the left. Finds an alley. Gets into Spartan territory. You know, interesting, we were talking before the game and in our meetings about, you know, boy, if you're Utah State and you're on your fourth quarterback, how much do you run them? Turned out to be a bigger part of their game yeah. plan than I think I would have done. And my concerns, but Coach Conte, this is what we do. Not that we're going to go out of our way to run them, but the zone read is a big part of what we do. He had to do two big touchdown runs, a short one. But I tell you, you got to credit Coach Wells and that coaching staff as we take a look at Chucky Keaton. Whatever adjustments they made to get the ball into the hands of JoJo Natson, because he was electric in that third quarter, and that turned this, not necessarily turned this game around. Certainly swung, swung all the momentum in Utah State's favor. I mean, those explosive plays, chunk yardage, changes field position, leads to scores. And that's been the difference here. Hill to the right, heads up field. Take a look back at those explosive plays by Good Natsu. Creative ways to get him the football. This time he lines up in the backfield, just speed sweep with him in the tailback position, turns into a 56 yard touchdown run. And then they match him up out of the backfield against a linebacker. He makes a catch out of the backfield. To me, this is smart play call, calling, excellent design, understanding your matchups and how to get your players in the best position to make plays. And that 56 yard of the first play of the second half. Out at the 40. King Buhajer in on the play also. Gain of one. Third and three. Pretty solid ninth right there by Jojo Natson, huh? That's really going to set up for a heck of a game next week at Boise State. Flag down on the play. First down and more if it stands. Tackled by Forrest Hightower. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. It would have been a 20-yard gain, wiped out by the penalty. And on Monday, Joe Flacco and the Ravens visit the Superdome to take on Drew Brees and the Saints. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN and watch ESPN. No other night is Monday night. Saints surprisingly vulnerable at home this year, coming off a loss to the Bengals. That doesn't happen a lot there. And the Ravens come off their bye week. They feel like they've got some momentum coming. Joe Flacco and Gary Kubiak is the offensive coordinator there now. Uh, kind of bringing that zone run scheme to the Ravens. So now it's a third and eight. Right, up with Butler for the first down. Came with the coverage. It's another And you'll see Myers, you're going to set up. Move in the pocket and he throws that ball on a dime outside accurate while moving. 14 yard pickup. Freshman at Rowlett, Texas. They recruit Texas, they get players in from Florida. They've done a great job of bringing people here to Logan. There's Joe Hill. Tackled by William Masai. Second down and four yards to go. Six yard gain. Well, 
Last year, the Mountain West Coach of the Year. You certainly could make a claim for him to go back-to-back -back in that award after all the injuries that they have had to withstand here this year to key players. Offensive lineman who has to come off the field for Utah State, but certainly a dominant performance on the ground here tonight by that offensive line in the running game. Yeah, it's an offensive line that's continued to improve week in and week out. Looks like that might be their center, yep. Austin Stevens, who's really been playing well for Utah State. Makes all the calls, changes the protections for them. Joe Summers in now at center. There's a flag. You're not going to hit the backup center right in there on this first play with a flag, are you, ref? That's not very nice. <laughs> Personal foul. Hands in the face. Defense, number three. Half distance to the goal. First down. Travis Rossini has been very active tonight. You kind of saw that look on his face. Of course he did. Look his jersey stripped. Do you think there's any holding going on in there? <laughs> I'd be a little pissed too. <laughs> he's, a t he, he's a tough guy. He, he's played a lot of downs for the Spartans. You know, we talked about Wimpy looking like a man. That is the look of a defensive lineman yeah, right there, yeah, huh? The sure. ripped jersey, the eye black. It sure is. Now Rashad Hall in the backfield, number 20. He has it now, up the middle. Has an alley. And not be He's tackled at the five. King and Blake. Pick up a four. Four and a half minutes left to play. The Aggies will improve to nine and three. Six and one in conference play. And they go to Boise State. Back to Hall and touchdown Aggies. Second of the season. All smiles for Chucky Keaton and the Aggies here tonight. Settled for six. So the Aggies are putting the finishing touches on win number five in a row. Up next, Boise State. We'll look ahead when we return. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Jones. There's a look at the wagon wheel that they brought to Logan after knocking off BYU earlier this season. They brought it down to the offices and had it on the field in the pregame. <laughs> posing for pictures. Take score a, 34 straight points and take a 41-7 lead. You can do that. You can do that. That wagon wheel is sitting right in their front office where everyone can see it. That really started to slide for BYU as well. Los Angeles bragging rights on the line tomorrow night at the Rose Bowl. It's the Crosstown rivalry. Number 19 USC visits number 9 UCLA Saturday at 8 Eastern on ABC. 
Let's check in with Allison Williams on that matchup. USC getting some reinforcement for that game. Suspended cornerback Josh Shaw will be able to play. Holly Rowe telling me earlier today that Steve Sarkeesian will definitely play him on special teams, but then they will kind of monitor him and see if they use him defensively. Shaw, of course, able to come back after being suspended when he lied to coaches about how he broke his ankles. Certainly an interesting storyline there. Some tough lessons being learned by Shaw, and, and, and I think you know, Sark handled it well. You know, he could do what he had to do, and you know, where that whole thing unfolded was just strange. You know, I don't know. I think that's I, a word for it. Yeah, just strange. You know. Uh, and boy, he was a big part of their their defense. Team captain. Team captain. You know? Yeah. Randy Monroe, now they throw it. Jordan Soares makes the grab. I'll tell you one thing about San Jose State and, and talking to their coaches, it's tough when you're losing, but they have continued practice hard and they continue to play hard here tonight. Pick up a 13. Randy Monroe breaks through. Gets to midfield. First down for the Spartans. Tackle by Marwin Evans. Thirteen yard gain. And back to Monroe. You know, David, we touched about next week a little bit here tonight for Utah State. If you look ahead since we can put this one in the books what are going to be some keys what is Utah State going to have to do well to get that road victory well they got to continue to run the football and work and running the football against a, a very good and aggressive Boise State defense they do a lot of things bring a lot of pressure they're very much like Utah State's defense two great defenses on the field the biggest thing they have prepared for defensively is their greatest stop the run but Boise State with the Jai can run the football with anybody they do a great job. They got quarterback to take care of the ball. And they're playing on the blue turf at night. Tough place to win. There's another tackle for a loss. Laurent Baldomero's in there. David Moalo. You know, Bravo, excuse me. It's a walk, see Zach Vigil on the sidelines like that and watching his younger players finish out the game for him. I know the feeling he has when you're part of a program so long and you bleed it, and to know it comes to an end, it's an emotional time for players. High throw over the middle looking for Voler. You know, your last home game, your family's there. There's a break in the action. We'll step aside as well. Utah State up 34. Well, they lit up the blue A on top of Old Main here for another Aggie win. Up 41 7 with 128 left to play. 129 left to play. Certainly an impressive second half by the Aggies. Again, 14-7 at halftime. And really, San Jose State, despite having to go to the backup quarterback, played well in the first half. And you thought we were going to have a dogfight here in the second half. Yeah, it did. And then Utah State at halftime got the ball to JoJo Natson. Kind of turned things around. Explosive plays left and right. What a night for Zach Vigil and his brother Nick combining for 31 tackles. They combined for a sack on the opening play of the game. They knocked out the quarterback on that play. Blake Jurich, who was the starter. And now it'll be their fifth straight victory. And they will head to Boise State with nine wins on the season. Kevin Wimpy should be ready to go for that one. The defense was impressive as well, limiting San Jose State to 66 yards of total offense in the second half.
Jojo Natson was the star of the second half on offense. Zach Vigil dominant the whole night on defense. And again, Utah State, very impressive here at home. Taking care of business. They know they need a couple things to fall their way. But what they've got to do is take care of the business at hand. That was beat San Jose State tonight and get ready to play Boise State on the road in a tough environment for a game that's going to be locked. Oh, it certainly will. Again, if they win out and Colorado State loses a game, they will host the Mountain West Conference Championship and they will represent the Mountain Division. The two head coaches talk things over. Why is it Was earlier in the game about the shifting of the defensive line. You saw Ron Carraher react when Ron Carraher react when he got the call. Not really should guess at what the conversation is right now. Heard the word shift, so I think yeah, it is. Think that is what we're going back to. Discussing it. Lengthy conversation here. And David, you had your eye on that situation earlier in the first half, and Coach Carraher lobbied for it and got the call. Yeah, and I, I, I see that. You see that happen a lot. I think what the question is, is the intent of the shift, you know? Are you shifting to move the alignment of your defense, or are you shifting with the intent of drawing the offense offsides? Coach Carrier's club falls to three and eight, two and five in conference play. And let's go down to Allison Williams. Thank you guys very much. Uh, Coach Wells, a, a rather lengthy conversation there with Coach Carrier. Everything okay there? Yeah, everything's good. Okay. Uh, second half for you guys. This was a one score game coming out of the half. What opened up for you guys? I think we just found ways to continue to run the ball. We won the ball in the trenches. Our front seven on both sides of the ball completely dominated. How would you describe the second half Jojo Natson had? Of what? I didn't hear The second half performance of Jojo Natson. Really good. You know, that kid's got, he's explosive when he gets out on the perimeter, and we were able to scheme a few things. He got out, and our receivers did a really good job of blocking for him on the perimeter. You're on your fourth quarterback in Kent Myers, but a lot of quarterback runs in this game. Was that by design, or was it more on the read with what he was seeing from the defense? A little bit of both. I mean, just schematically, and zone read's a big part of our offense, and, and you know, he did a nice job of reading it. Okay, thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks, Allison. Guys. So his ball club improves to 9-3, and 6-1 and one in conference play as they dominate the second half, and they win it 41-7. to seven. They now turn their attention to Boise State. That game will be on ESPN2. For David Diaz Infante and Allison Williams and our entire crew, I'm Eamon McEnany saying so long from Logan, Utah. NBA Tonight is coming up next here on ESPN2.